and welcome to another episode of Fully Charged. A little bit of a news update, some interesting stories that have caught my attention over the past few weeks, uh, starting with how very sunny it's been in the UK. Now, old gits like me have been harping on about the summer of 1976 ever since 1976. But finally, we've really got to shut up because 2018 has been a bumper solar summer for the UK. Everything's gone brown. It's only just started raining now. So far this year, UK solar production has broken all previous records. There was a few hours in late June where solar production produced 28% of all the electricity needs in the UK. 28% is a colossal number. Okay, it was only for two or three hours in the middle of the day, but the fact that it's even remotely possible to produce that much electricity from solar in the United Kingdom is remarkable. Now, this causes problems in the wider generating network. When there's an enormous amount of renewables, usually wind in this country, but this time solar, other forms of power generation have to be turned down, curtailed, as they call it, and they get curtailment payments. Yes, yeah, so if you run a big gas generating plant and you don't need that electricity, the national grid tells you to turn it down or turn it off, which they do, but they still get paid. Curtailment arrangements. Yes, they still get paid and that really is a form of subsidy. So just so you understand, the vast majority of subsidies that go to power generating go to fossil fuel based and nuclear based power generating, not renewables. Just worth mentioning that again. But when we see massive spikes in renewable energy generation, wouldn't it be brilliant if we could store a lot of that power in electric cars? Not just one or two, I'm talking millions of electric cars. Oh, but if we had millions of electric cars, then we would melt the grid, as all these shouty Daily Mail headlines continually tell us. As usual, they're completely wrong, and there's a huge amount of research and development going on at the moment into smart grid management systems that would enable this country to have a massive fleet of electric cars with very, very little adaptation or indeed increased generation. But once again, as we're told constantly by the mainstream media, what happens when the batteries run out? Well, here's a little story that will knock that old chestnut firmly on the head. A Tesla Model S, used by a Los Angeles-based limousine company, has just clocked up a total of 400,000 miles. That's 643,000 kilometers to save you getting a calculator out. Now, that is a lot of driving in very few years, and it's because they drive constantly from Los Angeles to Las Vegas. That's the regular trip they do. They also always, always, and only supercharge the car, and they always supercharge it to 100%. So they're doing all the things that Tesla and all electric car manufacturers tell you not to do. No, they only charge it on superchargers. They do it in the middle of the desert, in the middle of the day, when it's really, really hot. Just to be clear, after 194,000 miles, Tesla changed the batteries in the car because of uh, an internal imbalance, because it had been supercharged so much. Not because the range had gone. They reckon they'd lost about 5 or 6% of the range after 194,000 miles. Now, the battery pack was still under warranty, so the limo company didn't have to pay for the replacement. Now, this limousine company estimate they've saved $60,000 in fuel cost when compared to a similar sized fossil burner. And while we're on the subject of Tesla, the Model 3, uh, there's a review coming soon with Johnny Smith. Now, there's been an enormous amount of very negative press about how difficult it has been for Tesla to ramp up their manufacturing process and produce enough of these cars. As always, it's worth checking the source of those stories because what has in fact happened is the Tesla Model 3 has become the number one best-selling mid-sized luxury car in North America. In June alone, they sold 16,000 Model 3s. The next nearest competitor, the Mercedes C-Class, sold a mere 6,000. And while I'm continuing to harp on about Tesla, Monroe Associates, who are a company that literally get a car, a new car, and rip it to bits. They tear it to pieces down to its last tiny fraction individual components, and they then assess what those materials are, how they're constructed, where they come from, how much they cost. And they have worked out that the Tesla Model 3 is the most profitable electric car currently on the market. These findings are also backed up by a completely separate German company who did exactly the same thing, tore the car to bits, worked out how it was built, worked out how much it would cost. And they also stated Tesla can make these cars profitably. 
So there we go. There's a bit of balance to all the Tesla are about to go bankrupt stories that are so popular at the moment. I mean, it might. Tesla might go bankrupt, who knows? But at the moment, they are churning out Tesla Model 3s at around about 5,000 cars a week. And now, an interesting take on nuclear power, coming from someone who has spent their entire career working in the nuclear industry. Nobuo Tanaka, former director of the International Energy Agency, the IEA, and a lifelong uh, promoter of nuclear power, has just recently stated that building new nuclear power stations is, and I quote, ridiculously expensive. He also acknowledged that the IEA's 2017 report, which stated that solar power is now the cheapest way of generating electricity around the world, uh, was actually accurate and that building new nuclear power stations was utterly uncompetitive. And finally, Costa Rica! I'm sorry, I'm sorry, one day I'm going to be able to say the name of this remarkable country without putting on that silly voice. But their new president, 38-year-old Carlos Alvarado, has just said, we have the titanic and beautiful task of abolishing the use of fossil fuels in our economy to make way for the use of clean, renewable energy. Yes, Costa Rica want to be the first country in the world to be 100% renewably powered. Not just their electricity, which already is 100% renewable, but their entire transportation fleet. The government has stated that they want to ban all fossil fuel uh, transportation systems by 2021. Now that is a very high bar indeed, and I can't imagine how they're gonna do it in that kind of time. It's a relatively small country. As I've already stated, they produce their electricity renewably. It's uh, geothermal. Solar is mainly how they do it. But to, trans to, to, to change their entire transportation fleet in that time is pretty unimaginable how they're going to achieve that. But here's the thing. Within the next five to 10 years, we're gonna see the first countries that go 100% renewably powered for everything. It's going to happen somewhere. It's going to be a country somewhere. Costa Rica's certainly got a very good chance. They're a relatively small country. They don't have their own oil and gas industries, so everything that they burn when, it, when they come to burn fossil fuels it has to be imported. So therefore, there's an enormous incentive for them to move that way. Somewhat like a small island off the coast of Europe. I mean, imagine if a, an island which has enormous, abundant natural resources to become 100% renewably powered was to make that kind of decision. What an enormous driving force that would be for that economy and for the industrial sector in that country. Can't quite imagine it happening right at the moment, can we? But we can always pray. Anyway, that's all I've got time for. But before I go, I just want to uh, read out a handful of names of people who support Fully Charged on Patreon for $10 a month or more. It, we, we, we feel enormous gratitude for the support we've been getting off Patreon. It's incredibly important to this show. It's what keeps it going. I know I don't say it often enough, and I don't thank people often enough. These are really amazing people. Uh, number one, Laurent Herbier from Mexico City. Thank you, Laurent. Brian Frank, got that right. Happy birthday, Brian. Probably a bit late. Mark Held, thank you, Mark. Sam460, Sam460, oh yes. John. Now, that doesn't narrow it down a great deal, does it? There could be quite a lot of Johns, but the only name I've got is John. James Williams, Bal Riot. Now, Bal, I know very well, and Bal knows me very well, and I'm really grateful, Bal. Thank you so much, mate. Ian Walker, Dari Skullerson, and Clive Baldwin. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, please do check the Patreon link beneath this uh, video. Uh, please do subscribe to Fully Charged. Please click the little bell button. Uh, at the top of this video and as always if you have been thank you for watching <laughs>